Hello crafty friends, today I'm working in my art journal. I want to create a spread using the leftover mosaic pieces that I created for card number 41 in my full deck challenge. If you'd like to see that video and the mosaic pieces that I created, I will link the video in the description below. For starters, I'm going to create my background page, which will hopefully complement the mosaic pieces that I'm going to stick on top later. I had started a different kind of project on these pages. As you can see, there's some kind of collaging and some paint, but it really wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't feeling anything with the page. So I'm just going to cover over it just to start with more of a plain base to start again. I'm using pieces of paper with text from an old book and I'm sticking those down with some Mod Podge. I also have some leaves, some green leaves. I'm look, thinking to make a green toned background so I think the leaves will suit that well. I don't really know exactly what I'm doing yet. I have sort of an idea in my mind but it'll all work as, as I go. It's sort of like an intuitive piece. So I'm adding some neutral tones which is the pages from the book and then some greens. I have a combination of cardstock and um, the leaves are actually from an old calendar but you could use bits from magazines, um, old greeting cards, anything you have. Try and use what you have in your stash and what you enjoy working with. Once all the adhesive is dry, I'm going to add some white gesso on the top. I'm going to apply this the way I normally apply the gesso. I'm going to just use my finger. I find that this way it spreads better for me and I enjoy working with the gesso on my hands. I'm not going to cover the entire area. I'm going to sort of concentrate on the joins of where the different collage pieces um, overlap and also just to lighten everything. And I like to call this sort of a misty look. It sort of lightens everything up. You can still see the underneath patterns and writing and designs shining through, but they're a lot softer so that they're not sort of the focal point. I'm adding a piece of masking tape down the center where the spine is. This is just to waterproof it. So I'm going to be using some inks and paints later on and I don't want this to seep through into the spine and make everything soggy. I also like the texture that uh, masking tape actually gives to collage work. I would love if you subscribed to my channel. I have lots of tutorials coming your way, some process videos, junk journal flip throughs, quite a variety. And also hit the little bell so that you're notified every time I upload new content. I always have a baby wipe handy when I'm working with gesso. It's a great way to lift gesso if you've maybe applied too much or if you want to help with the blending. I always use one, I think it works great. Once the gesso is dry, I'm going to start applying my color. I'm going to start with my color burst powders. This one is the lime green. So I just sprinkle a little bit of the powder. It's super concentrated. You really don't need a lot. A little goes a long way. And then I'll spray water with my water bottle. And I also use a very wet paintbrush to help the color move along on the page. I don't try to control it too much. I sort of let it do its own thing. Let it move around the page and just create beautiful patterns and designs. I'm going to add a few different layers of color, but I'm going to dry each layer before I add the next one. I also use a tissue to um, sort of mop up all the big puddles so it doesn't take too long to dry. This next color I'm using of the color burst powders is called chartreuse. If you don't have inks or these color burst powders, that's fine. You don't have to use these products or go out and buy them. You can use watered down acrylics, watercolors, or even soluble crayons, anything that you have in your stash. 
If you notice, I place something underneath the book to keep the book level um, while it's drying, otherwise all the watery medium will puddle in the middle of the book. This is Color Splash Ink in the color Lime Splash, and this is by Little Birdie Crafts. I will put a link below to their website. There's also a discount available if you make a purchase. You want to try and get some contrasting areas. So you don't want everything sort of the same tone. So add additional ink or paint in certain sections to make them a little bit darker and then leave some areas lighter. It creates a really good contrast and adds interest to your page. To lighten it a bit, I'm going to add a bit of a yellowy color. This is a Distress Oxide Spray by Tim Holtz. The color is called Fossilized Amber. I'm not going to spray it on, I'm just going to drop it on a few drops, use my spray bottle to make it a bit more watery, and then just move it around the page in certain areas. Let it blend a little bit with some of the greens to create additional tones, and then just leave some of that beigey yellow shining through. I'm not going to overwork it. I'm quite happy with that. I'm now going to work on the mosaic pieces. If you'd like to see how I created this background page, which I'm then going to cut up into the little squares, um, I will link that video for you to see how I created this. It'll be in the description below. I've then gone and cut up the whole background page into little squares. I've cut mine two centimeters by two centimeters, but you can cut them as big or as small as you like. I'm now just going to work and arrange them onto the background page. I'm leaving a gap in between these. On the altered playing card when I did them, I stuck them sort of side by side. But here I want the background to shine through. So I'm just working through and I'm trying to alternate the colors so we don't sort of have the same colors next to each other. We have some pinks and some turquoise and then some stamping and some not. So just work through and find a pattern that you like. You can make them straight like I am. You can make um, any kind of design and then once you're ready and you're happy with your layout, you can glue everything down. I'm going to use Mod Podge to glue mine down only because I find it easy to use and it's just on my desk. You could also use craft glue. I'm not sure if a glue stick would hold quite well. I've used watercolor paper for my mosaic pieces and they are quite thick and sturdy. So I think something a bit more um, robust would work better. So work through and stick them all down. I want to add a bit of dimension to each of the mosaic pieces, otherwise they seem a little bit flat. So I'm using a black watercolor pencil, which I just um, pop the tip of the pencil in some water. And then I'm going around each and every mosaic piece just to give it the sort of, it makes it pop it, and it defines it, which I think um, finishes it off really well. If too much black comes off or if the pencil smudges, just use your finger and a, or a paintbrush just to sort of smoosh it into the background. It doesn't matter if it's a bit more grey, I think it just adds more, more interest. I have these die cut black butterflies that I'm also going to add, just some very simple decoration to finish it off and then some wording that I have found in an old book that I've just cut out.
The wording seemed to be getting lost a little bit in the background color because the background color is similar to the page color. So I'm just going to add a little bit of gesso just to lighten it up so that the lettering can hopefully um, show off a little better. I'm just going to lighten around the wording a little bit more. I'm just adding some more gesso. I want it to pop a little bit more. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank you very much for watching. Do try this mosaic technique. It's really a lot of fun, especially creating the background before you cut it up into mosaic pieces. Here is a close-up of my page. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Bye.